It seems sometimes like the best things in life are hidden. Like as if by design we have to kind of dig for the diamonds. Have you ever noticed that? And the deeper we go with our work, the more diamonds we find. <laughs> and the more easy it is for us to just then beam that out into the world. So one of these little treasures is buried in the least read book of the Bible, Chronicles which is basically chapter after chapter after chapter of genealogy. Just names, lots of Hebrew names, many of them hard to pronounce for me anyway. And so in chapter four, in the middle of that chapter, there are just two verses. And it's a story about an honorable boy named Jabez and his prayer. See, Jabez was named Jabez, which means one who causes pain because his mother bore him in pain. And Jepez, we don't have a lot of words in this verse, but he writes this prayer, it seems, in response to that, as if, uh-uh, I'm not playing that. That's not going to be my claim to fame in this world. That's not going to be who I am in this world because it's not who I've come to be and it's not the essence of which I've come from. And so his prayer goes like this, and you may have heard it before. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil so that I may not cause pain. Beautiful, isn't it? And so I, what I love about it, there are a lot of things, and I want to kind of unpack this for us today. But what, one of the things I love is that he goes right in for the blessing. You know, It's not like I have to earn the blessing, I have to do this, and then I'll get to do that. If I'm a good boy, then I'll, you know, he doesn't play that game at all. It's like, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Let's get this straight from the, the top. <laughs> Bring on the blessings, right? He's a good unity student, it seems. <laughs> because there seems to be an innate understanding for Jabez of who he really is. One born of original blessing one who is worthy of innate good, one who comes from that innate goodness. Despite anything that his religion is going to share with him or that his mother has already named him and may teach him about his unworthiness or his sinful nature, he doesn't seem to be buying any of it. And instead, taking up the truth of that original blessing, and, and the author Bruce Wilk Wilkinson says the use of the word indeed in Hebrew, what that means, is like five exclamation points. <laughs> so it's not just bless me indeed, not even just one exclamation point, but like, yeah, bring it on. I'm taking it, I'm claiming it, and I know that I'm worthy of it. So, you know, when you were born, there was some celebration, some, someone who, who beheld the miracle that is you, this tiny form of spirit, and really saw it for the miracle that it was. Whether it was a parent or a family member, a doctor or a midwife, I know there was somebody who beheld your birth and you, and those first hours, minutes even, of seeing that innate worth. We all see it when we experience a newborn, right? That otherworldly truth of who we are. And so even if you had somebody in your life, like Jabez had his mother, who couldn't see it, do you know the only reason why that person couldn't see it? Because they didn't know it for themselves. You can't behold somebody else's worth. You can't behold the essence of love from which we come if you yourself have a block to understanding that for yourself, right? And so if there is still some old stuff <laughs> lingering, some you know, forgiveness that hasn't been completed, some pieces of feeling like somebody didn't see you for that blessing and the miracle that you are, Maybe just thinking about the fact that they couldn't see that for themselves will ease a little bit of that, will open up a little space, will expand your heart a little bit, and to recognize that at least one person, and probably many, did behold the truth of who you are. 
did see the miracle that you are, the original blessing that you come from, and you came out then, oh, that you would bless me indeed. <laughs> I am blessed by being here, by being in this form. And then he talks about that your hand would be with me. And in unity, we wouldn't use that language that sounds more like a personified God. But the essence of what the meaning is, is there for us, that the guidance is always available to us. Always, 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 whenever we have a decision to make, anytime we have this sort of you know, thing inside of us that feels a little confused or uncertain, if we drop in and we relax and we pause and we open and we listen, the guidance is there for us. It's as simple as that, really, because the core of us is, 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 is the wisdom of God. <laughs> And so it's only through practice of pausing and stopping and listening that we begin to, to get that voice and that vision of spirit and become so familiar with it that it's just a you know, half second drop in and we, we got it. We know whether it's to go slow or to go fast or, or to not go at all or to turn left or right or say this or don't say that or move in this direction or wait, do this first. All of that is available to us. You know, in the old view of spirit, we used to think, you know, God, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, God's too busy for my prayers? <laughs> you know, as if like there would ever be anything that, that that substance of the everywhere present love couldn't come in and wisdom couldn't come in and wouldn't be thrilled to be called upon to guide us, the highest part of us, to guide the rest of us in the direction that we need to go. And then he goes on in the prayer to say that you would keep me from evil. And evil, well, that for us is error, basically. That's when we have false thoughts. That's when we're, we get out of alignment with spirit and we think somehow that we are limited in some way. And, and, it, and it goes with a line of, so that I may not cause pain. So keep me from error so that I may not cause pain. Keep me from thinking that I am smaller than I am. Keep me from, from getting off course to, you know, we could use Lynn Twist's scarcity myths because they kind of, they underpin those cultural scarcity myths, underpin pretty much everything that causes us to derail from spirit. The scarcity myths are there's not enough or that more is better, which begets lots of greed, right? Or that, oh, that's just the way it is sort of that surrendered, I'm hopeless and powerless, and so that's just the way it is. And really, all of our pain comes out of that, those three scarcity myths. All the pain that we might catalyze for another, you know, we don't really cause somebody hurt, but, but they may choose to feel hurt because of something we did or said or didn't do or didn't say. Anybody ever feel like you catalyze pain? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to, to be a human being in the world without feeling like at some point something we say or do or don't say or don't do catalyzes some pain for someone or a group of people or for ourselves. But if we go back to these scarcity myths and we say, well, where was I in that? Was I believing somehow that there's not enough or that more is better or that that's just the way it is? And instead, we could turn that around to the truth that it is, which is there's plenty for everyone. There's more than enough for all. And that we can always make things better. And I'm enough, right? Because there's always that underneath that. Right? I'm enough, and there's enough, and there's enough in the world, and there's enough for me, and there's enough for all. And that we can always make things better together. I know the one that I tend to slip into is there's not enough time. So you, we all probably have our own version of the, of the tape that plays, right? So you know when you get a little off center where you go, right? <laughs> and, and, and think about what is yours? Which one do you tend to go to? Gravitate toward more is better or there's not enough? Or, and, and how can you flip that? Because I know when I'm in the there's not enough time that I'm, if not causing pain, at least withholding joy from myself and the people around me, you know? So it may not seem outward like pain, but there is joy missing, right? That same, that coin that has joy on one side has pain on the other. It's, it's that same coin that can be flipped at any time, right? 
And so we are meant, like Jabez, not to be bringers of pain, not to cause pain, but to be bringers of joy. And he knew that, this honorable little boy, Jabez. And so this humble yet potent prayer continues to live in the fibers of of our everyday life. And to be like a spirit-infused co-creative prayer, really, which is what it is. It really has that kind of co-creation at its base. It goes through all the levels in five lines of of everything that we really need to know about the spiritual journey and how to turn it around when it's getting off course, moving toward this idea of, and not just pain, but suffering, really. You know, pain sort of happens as part of a lifetime, but the suffering, you know, that's the choice, right? Whether we decide to suffer over it is always the choice that we have. And so alleviating that by turning these scarcity myths around into the truth that they are is a key piece in our journey. And then it comes, this, this prayer itself is sort of delivered in that very conventional way, you know, that the, it's like the, the small self, the ego, the personality self is beseeching some supreme being, right? So it's like, you know, there, there's that kind of direction of the prayer that's very conventional. But the second line sort of goes off in a different direction. And it is, enlarge my territory. It's curious. What is Jabez asking for? More land? You know, what does he mean by enlarge my territory? It almost seems like at this point, the prayer needs to be flipped. (laughs) And instead of that direction being from the personality self to some supreme being, that it is God's prayer through us, that it is the highest part of us praying to the rest of us, that it is the spirit inside of us that is leading us and saying, enlarge my territory. Be spirit in the world. Bring heaven to earth is another way of saying that, right? Enter into this territory of the presence and the power and then be it and spread it out across the land. And where do we begin with enlarge my territory? How do we enlarge the territory of spirit? Well, just as we sing every Sunday, let there be peace on earth, what's the next line? And let it begin with with me, right? So we have to begin with our own energetic body, our own sense of who we are. And so in the body itself, we can enlarge the territory of spirit. We have this great tool, all the yogis know about it, breath. And the very breath of spirit expands. If anybody's ever gotten a massage or any body work and the, and the therapist says, breathe, right? <laughs> And so as we breathe, we open up spaces where there is constriction, where there is tension, where there is pain. The breath enlarges the territory of spirit, brings relaxation and peace and openness and receptivity, gives room for spirit to move through the body and through us for us to be that channel. And then in the mind, you know, the, it's, it's so fascinating to live with a child. I know, I know many of you have raised children, so this is like, but there's almost like, I, I love being with a child for many reasons, but there's also this sort of like human divine experiment going on in my household at all times. <laughs> you know, to watch the development is really interesting. Grace came, our, our goddaughter came to live with Brenly and I when she was 10 months old. And for most of her life, she's lived with us. There's been some breaks along the way. But she's five now, and she's in kindergarten, and she's, she's so excited to learn. Like, every time she comes home, she's telling us about all the things that she learned. It sort of spills out throughout the day, you know? And, and it's like all of that stuff about the world that she's learning for the first time, like calendars and clocks and days of the week, and, you know, just all of it comes tumbling out, you know, the songs and the letters and the, you know, forming words. It's very exciting times. And she says to me, my brain is growing. <laughs> I'm like, I know, it's amazing to watch. You're just like a little sponge, you know? And so it's that filling time, right? And so now most of us are in that era where we're like, oh, spill it out, you know? Like, it's too full in there. As my mother says, my attic is full. I can't access that file. You know, it's just, <laughs> it, it, just get, it, get, it just gets busy in there, right? And so, so we want to get space, spaciousness. And of course, for a child, too, that spaciousness is important. And so Brendley taught uh, 
taught Grace meditation. And so that she also practices meditation in the morning. So she's also expanding her mind and enlarging the territory of spirit. And I, and I know Brenly had a little self-interest in it too because she wanted a quiet morning. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It's a win-win. <laughs> But for all of us, right, the practice of meditation, of mindfulness, it, it infuses then the spirit in, into the mind and gives that enlarged territory of spirit in the mind. Oh, thank God, right? This is our work in our culture. This is the Western culture at work, to work with the open. That's why meditation and mindfulness is so popular, because everybody just wants to give the thing a break already, you know, like the spinning mind, the busy thoughts, the to-dos, and just that jammed full, and just go, ah, oh, let me rest in the pause of spirit. Even now, just even in this moment, at any given moment, just, you know, just stop and pause and take a moment and drop into the heart and go, ah, oh, there, there I am. There's the presence. <laughs> That's all it takes is one breath, one pause, one stop, and then there is an expansion of everything available to us, an enlargement of spirit's territory through our own beings. And it's natural then that the enlargement of spirit's territory goes more toward the song than Andoni just sang, that we begin then to share the goodness, the generosity, the kindness that comes from the enlargement of spirit's territory on earth. Where there is pain, we can counter that with this kind of enlargement. Ann Curry, the journalist in 2012, when, when the massacre happened at Sandy Hook and 20 children were killed and six adults were killed. And she was in that space that so many of us go into where we're just sort of like paralyzed with grief and a sense of powerlessness maybe or helplessness. I want to do something. I don't really know what to do. I don't know how to make it better. And she came up with this very simple idea. She said, I just had to do something, so I, I thought I'll do 26 acts of kindness in just, just for the you know, goodness of the life of each one that was lost. And she posted it on social media, and within days, she had also posted you know, an invitation to others to join her to do 26 acts of kindness or generosity. And 17,000 people pretty immediately agreed to do so. <laughs> and so that... that that spreading of goodness, right? Where there is pain, we don't have to get locked into that. Jabez refused. He said, look, where are the blessings? Enlarge the territory of spirit. And so we do that by doing the best we can with what we have and not thinking, oh, well, it's not enough or it won't bring those people back. Of course it won't bring these, those people back, but how beautiful that where there was pain, we bring in the spirit the best way we can and we spread it out through the land. And that, that movement, that social media movement, did go throughout the nation and beyond. And so it doesn't take a lot when we are open, when our minds are open and our hearts are open and our bodies have opened up to enlarge the territory of spirit. The ideas are always there for us, generous acts everywhere present. Our prayer remains to, to stay in alignment, to not go to the error side, but, but stay guided, to stay in alignment with the divine. Joel Hartman was a, a homeless man in Atlanta on Thanksgiving weekend, and he was going through the dumpster at the Omni Hotel, and he found a wallet. And so he went in to the front desk, and he said, I think this wallet may belong to one of your guests. And the management of the hotel was so amazed and you know, blown away by the fact that this homeless man who could really use the money in that wallet was being so honest to turn it in, that they put him up for the weekend. They gave him room service. And it's like they couldn't do enough. Then they decided to buy him a new wardrobe and give him a makeover. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the media heard about this. And so once the media caught hold of the story, it, the word went out about Joel Hartman and his family, who'd been looking for him for years, found him and got him the medical attention he needed. All that because one man was in integrity. One man was living from the enlarged territory of spirit. And by doing the right thing at the right time, it just opens up the world. You see how spirit spreads? It's like... That's what, what it's meant to do. I mean, that's what it wants to do. 
It's we who, who do the, create the log jam. <laughs> you know, the river wants to flow, and we're like putting the logs in there. No, I can't, I won't, I, you know, I'm, I, it's, you know, tamped down, I'm too... I'm too whatever, I'm not enough of, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm part of the Smith family and the Smith family doesn't, you know, we're not loud, we don't make a big splash, you know, it's like whatever, these, these ridiculous ways in which we have constricted ourselves and kept ourselves small is jamming the log for the enlargement of spirit on earth. If we want a world that is a world of peace, if we want a world that is a world of harmony, if we want a world that is a world of love, and we keep singing it and we keep saying it, but what are we doing about it? Get the logs out and let it flow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and when we do, and when we do, there's joy for all of us, you know? It's, it's, it, it's, it's, we are, we are just, we are the bringers of joy. We are the bringers of joy. And if we know that, and we say that enough, and we recognize that enough, we'll see where we are out of step with joy. And where we are out of step with joy, it'll become easier and easier for us to line back up with the joy that we are meant to live, the joy that we are meant to be. You know, life then doesn't have to feel heavy and burdensome and, ugh, responsible and, ugh, you know how we get. I don't know about you, but I get there, you know. It's like, ugh, it feels like there's so much to do and all the details. And, and, it's, and then we just step out into the light bright of day and all of a sudden we're in that territory. And it's like everything's shiny and new and exciting and flowing and fabulous and prosperous. And that's when we're in the truth. That's where we're meant to be. Jabez knew that. As I flipped his prayer from just that one line that was really speaking to spirit's territory being enlarged, I flipped the whole prayer into spirit is praying the prayer. You know, it's God that wants to be known on earth. It's that that essence of divine desire that wants to be known through you. And so let spirit pray to you so that you can be the prayer of God on earth. What if we flipped all of our prayers? I think we would have really powerful material to work with. And so this is what the prayer sounds like uh, when I wordsmithed it a little bit so that spirit is praying it through us. Oh, bless me indeed by your very birth. And enlarge my territory, expand heaven on earth. Let all you do be aligned with me. Don't limit me or try to separate me. That's what causes pain. Use my power, be a bringer of joy. And that's who we are, yes? Enlarging the territory of spirit, being a bringer of joy. Let's affirm that and know that together. I enlarge spirit's territory. I am a bringer of joy. Let's say that one more time together. I enlarge spirit's territory. I am a bringer of joy. And so it is.